good evening one and all and welcome to the video this video we are going to essentially read an article that is written by mr james beswick on aws that is essentially about understanding data streaming concepts for serverless application so this is not a hands on labs but rather a just a video where we can understand the concepts about kinesis data stream what is a shard producer consumer and just some basic terms so without wasting much of time let's get started with this session all right so uh, by the way i'm going to read couple of uh, stuff here so i hope you guys enjoy and find the content useful uh, with that being said let's get started with this video all right so so uh, as i said right this entire uh, ppt that i have on my screen essentially i have taken from the article uh on aws and which is written by mr james beswick okay so feel free to go and check their uh his article out okay so amazon kinesis right amazon kinesis is suite uh, of managed services that helps you to collect process and analyze streaming data in near real time it consists of four separate uh it consists of four separate services that are designed for a common task with streaming data so when you look at anything when, when you when you have a need for streaming application i think kinesis is one of the choice you want to try and explore benefits uh again i'll try my best to you know have a better look okay hope this works um one of the main benefits of processing streaming data is that an application can react as new data is generated instead of waiting for those batches right this real time capability enables new functionality for applications for example payment processor can analyze payments in real time to detect fraudulent transaction very amazing um, stuff right e-commerce website can use streams of clicks activities to determine site engagement matrix in near real time kinesis can be used with amazon ec2 based and container based workloads however its integration with aws lambda can make it useful for data source for serverless application using lambda as a stream consumer it can help it can also help minimize the amount of operational overhead for managing streaming application so lambda is one of the most popular um, you know component in aws like everyone you know it's a serverless uh, functions cloud functions right uh, you could easily integrate uh, real time stream with lambda to process your data uh, let's move on on the next slide important streaming concepts uh, alicat is a home fitness system that allows user to compete in an intense series of 5 minute virtual bicycle race so it's a company you know they have a product where people usually bike and they essentially compete with one another right up to a thousand racer at a time take a saddle and push the limits to the cadence and resistance to set personal records and rank on the leaderboard so the idea here is what they want to do is uh, all these people are working out hard 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 and they essentially want to show who's uh burning most calorie on the leaderboard right on who's coming up on the top on on the bottom section but they want to do it real time one way would be you know what once the so let's read a uh, one way is essentially when the uh when they're done with the workout you essentially process it and then rank it but you know client doesn't want it you want to see that happening real time so the alicat front end allows user to configure their face uh, their races and view real time leader uh, leaderboard and historical ranking the front end could wait until the end of each race and collect the total output from each racer right once the batch is ready it could rank the result provided to the leaderboard once the race is completed right i explained you however this is not very engaging for the competitors by using streaming data instead of a batch application sh shows the racer a view of who's winning during the race this makes the virtual environment more like a real life racing right so a uh, very good example right let's understand the concept of producers here uh, in streaming data workloads producer are the application that produces data and consumers are those that uh, 
processes it. In serverless streaming application, a consumer is usually a lambda function. Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose or Kinesis Data Analytics. These are the stuff that can act as a consumer. On the, on the, di on the slide, here you see a Lambda function that can be a consumer, a Firehose or a Data Analytics. Lambda, a great way to process things. Uh, in a, in a, in a, in a, but the only, um, uh, uh, you could write a custom code in Lambda, right? Um, and then you could do your processing there, right? Data firehose, you could deliver data to the destinations such as Elk, Datadog, S3, Redshift, a um, lot more, right? A single stream may have tens and thousands of producer, which could be web, mobile applications or IoT devices. The Alicate application uses AWS IoT Core SDK for JavaScript to publish messages to an IoT topic. An IoT rule action then uses direct integration with Kinesis data stream. So they publish data to AWS IoT Core, then they have a rule, they match the rule, and then they essentially, you know, the data is essentially pumped to a Kinesis data stream. Uh, let's read more. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying with this, um, uh, you know, reading stuff, right? It's really fun to learn all these concepts. The Alicat simulator uses AWS SDK to send large number of messages to a stream. The SDK provides two methods, put record and put records. Put record means to insert one item, put record is to insert many items. Um, the first allows you to send a single record while the second supports up to a 500 records uh, 500 uh, records per request or up to 5 megabits in total, okay? A producer can put record directly on a stream, for example, via AWS SDK, that is Boto3, or other services such as API Gateway um, or AWS IoT Core. It, um, if a direct a producer, if a, uh, if a producer must have an appropriate permission to write to the data stream, if indirect producer must have permission to invoke the proxy service. So what is Mr. Beswick is saying, if you're, if the if you want to directly put into the data stream, do so via proxy layer, okay? And, but if, even if you have to do that, do it, make sure you have the right permission and you fine grain the, you know, that's what uh, he's trying to say. While there may be many producer, uh, there are comparatively fewer consumer. You can register up to 20 consumer per data stream, 20 consumer per data stream, which share the outgoing throughput limit with a shard. Consumer receive batches of record sequentially, okay? Which means processing latency increases as you add more consumers to the stream, okay? Shards, streams, and partition keys. A shard is a sequence of data record in a stream with a fixed capacity. Part of Kinesis billing is based upon number of shards. So a single shard can process up to one megabyte per second or a thousand incoming records. Very, very important for us to know that these numbers. One, rec uh, one shard can also send up to two megabits per second of outgoing data to the downstream consumer. There are hard limits on the throughput of the shard and as your application approaches these limits, you must add more shards to avoid, uh, to avoid exceeding these limits. So uh, if you, if you are, you know, guys are like getting at the threshold, try to increase the number of shards. A stream is a collection, uh, a stream is a collection of these shards and is often, and is often a grouping at a workload or a project level. Adding another shard to the stream effectively doubles the throughput, okay? Very, very important. Though it also doubles the cost, okay? So remember, uh, it comes at a cost. When there is only one shard in a stream, all the record is sent to, all the record is sent to that, uh, to, to that and routed to the same shard. With multiple shards, the routing of the incoming messages to the shard is determined by a partition key. So just to give you an idea, when you do a put record or put records, you have to provide a partition key. Now what uh, Kinesis does is in internally has a hash function. I think it's an MD5. 
and based on that it determines which shard that record it should go to okay so the data producer adds the partition key before sending the records to kinesis the service calculates an md5 hash of a key which maps to one of the shards in the stream each shard is assigned a range of non overlapping hash values so each partition key can map to one uh, one and only one shard that makes sense this is important the partition key exist in an alter uh, exist as an alternative of specifying a shard id directly since it's common in producer application to add and remove shards depending upon the traffic how you use it how you use the partition key determines shard mapping behavior this is very important so do know this concepts very well fourth thing for example same value if you specify the same string as a partition key every message is routed to a single shard regardless the number of shards that you have okay this is called overheating of a shard okay then the second strategy is a random value you know what i'll just select a random value for a shard so what happens using a pseudo random value such as a uuid evenly distributes messages between all the shards available okay so that's that strategy then you have time based um, strategy using a timestamp as a partition key may result in a preference for a single shard if multiple messages arrive at the same time okay and the last one is application specific um so the allocate application uses a race id as a partition key to ensure that all the messages from a single race are processed by the same shard consumer so i hope this was useful by reading these uh, stuff now a lambda function is a consumer application for data stream and produce uh, and 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 processes one batch of record for each shard okay so since allocate uses tumbling window to calculate the aggregates between the batches this use of partition key ensures that all the messages for each race id are processed by the same function the downside of this architecture is that it is limited to 1000 incoming messages per second with the same race id since uh, since it's bound to a single shard right so how it's so the way you determine your partition key plays a plays a crucial role in your throughput of your kinesis okay so that is what the author is trying to explain deciding a partition key strategy depends upon the specific need of your workloads in most of the cases a random partition key is often the best approach like a uuid right ordering an item pose uh, item potency records in kinesis stream are delivered to consuming application in the in the same order they arrive at the kinesis service this is important so the order is maintained okay the service assign a sequence number to the record when it receive and is delivered as a part of payload to the kinesis consumer so when the consumer gets this data there you will see a sequence number which is very important okay now here it's where it gets interesting uh, as you guys know kinesis supports fan uh, uh what was that i forgot the name uh, fan out um, will read i think i uh, something for fan out i forgot Let, let's just read when uh, when using lambda as consuming application for kinesis by default each shard has a single instance okay of each function processing record in this case ordering is guaranteed as kinesis invokes the function serially one batch of record at a time right so that's that this is where it gets interesting you can increase the number of uh, you can increase the number of concurrent function uh, invocation by setting parallelization factor on the event source mapping but hang on this allows you to set the concurrency between 1 and 10 which provides a way to increase the lambda throughput but let's see what happens uh, increase the lambda throughput if the iterator age matrix is increasing however one side effect is that ordering per shard is no longer guaranteed so uh, if you set the parallelization factor and if you increase the concur concurrency ordering will be a problem so so you got to really choose like what 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 your application really needs okay so um, let's move um, forward uh, just going to click here i think uh, we have reached the end of the uh, slides and presentation 
I strongly recommend everybody to uh, go and read more um, on the official website. If you wanna, you know, read more, uh, here you can see. Uh, hopefully, I, I, I guess can show you. So if you come to Google, uh, this one. This is the article by Mr. James Beswick, right? Uh, was published on 2021, 12 July. And if you want to learn and explore more on AWS, Kinesis, FireOS, DataStream, I have a playlist, six videos. I have videos on SQS, API Gateway, Lambda, AWS, Step Function, DynamoDB, and much, much more. Uh, so let me, uh, yeah, let me turn that off. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, please try and read the blog. Please try having a habit of reading articles, reading blogs, because that will help you to understand the concepts much, much more better. And by the way, uh, if you don't, uh, um, if you hate reading, you can simply listen to this video. If you don't want to watch um, the graphics, simply listen to the download this video as an as an as an MP3 or an MP4. And then simply listen to the audio like a podcast or, you know, audio book, right? I hope this will help you. I hope this video was useful. And as usual, if you guys have any more questions, list your question and we will try to answer all the questions uh, posted on the chat box window. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video where we will learn, explore more and more and more about Amazon Web Services. Thank you so much. See you guys in the next video.